Results based measurement and reporting. First question is why to measure? Very simple, unless results are measured or something is measured, management and employees don't know what is their success, what is the progress so far. Therefore, it's about identifying the current and the planned future state. Where are we now? To understand that some measurements have to be taken. What is the current customer satisfaction? What is the current um, uh, volume of incidents or the number of changes failed or even um, uh, the number of business transactions which have succeeded or failed. We need measurements to understand all that. Only then we can plan for a future state and have targets for the future and measure our progress towards the future. Therefore, you also have another related point here to measure progress towards the goals or objectives. Thus, overall measurements help us to check the uh, what has been achieved on improvement initiatives, what has been achieved on ongoing changes, and there may be some organizational changes happening, for example, moving from waterfall to agile approach. And it also helps us to understand how is the result or the actual performance as compared to the initial plan. Many measurements, in fact, most of the measurements support business decisions. If uh, the management knows uh, measurements about errors in work, they know how much effort is being wasted and they may ask for uh, bringing in approaches like Six Sigma, uh, for example. If the management knows that things are taking too much time uh, to respond to a customer, they may propose lean, uh, meaning value stream mapping kind of approach. Therefore, measurements drive behaviors based on decision making by the management. And once again, we have got the similar things here. We know how well services are meeting the customer's needs. If not, then there may be improvements, uh, initiatives undertaken. Couple of simple concepts from ITIL Foundation, output and outcome. Outputs are tangible or intangible deliverables, something physical or something electronic, like a software release or a contract document or a fireproof safe or a backup of a data from a certain location. Whereas an outcome is the result for a stakeholder enabled by one or more outputs. So if let's say we are taking backups of data, then the outcomes could be um, um, evidences for uh, archived medical records. So if there's an audit, if there's a medical audit, then the outcome is, the positive outcome is that it'll be possible for the consumer or customer to show to the regulatory authorities that they have uh, met, uh, they are compliant with the medical records archiving. Uh, similarly, there are other outcomes like uh, saving of money, a uh, speed up of uh, processing times, or uh, better uh, customer, uh, a feeling about a product uh, can also be outcomes. When to do results-based measurement is the next question. And what is it? A results-based approach focuses on the outcomes of employee actions. For example, time to resolve an issue, improvement in customer experience, number of successful releases or deployments, sales uh, performance on a monthly basis. Therefore, when employee put in efforts towards these things, they get to see the results of their efforts. And uh, so it makes sense that when there are efforts which impact outcomes, and then uh, the results should be measured. And there is this concept that employees will put in effort only when they see results. And when they get results, they expect some kind of recognition for that. Therefore, results-based based approach is a factor in motivating people to do their job properly. And uh, if they're putting in results and they're not seeing effort, they have two options. Either they can stop putting in the effort or they can improve their skills to deliver better results. Another situation where uh, 
So since I mentioned about skills, if you look at this on the top right, it mentions the results-based approach is most appropriate when people have the skills and abilities needed to complete their job, complete their work. So when they have the skills, they know that they know they can do their job well. Therefore, they will see the results. And if the results are okay, they can further improve their behavior and further improve their performance. But if the skills are not sufficient, then if they see that the results are poor and if the skills are not sufficient, then they can go for a skill building initiatives and improve the skills and improve the results based on that. Correction of behavior, for example, could be ability to deal with time pressure. Though a person might have good skills, technical skills, to deliver results, but what if there is time pressure? Under time pressure, sometimes people can make mistakes or they may lose the motivation to perform their job. And therefore, um, results-based measurement can also help in understanding how behavior can be improved to some extent. And lastly, when there is, there are several ways to achieve the same outcome. For example, to reduce the number of uh, changes which are failing, and therefore to increase the number of successful changes, there may be several ways to do that. One could be to have a better change management model. Another option could be to define the appropriate change authority. So when we, when there are multiple ways to achieve the desired outcomes, then people know exactly what is best to derive the expected outcome. So they may either go for, uh, they may decide to go for a better change authority or they may go for a improved change model, whichever is appropriate for the situation. And that's when uh, results-based approach uh, can be useful. So in summary, results-based approach, use it when people have the skills to do it. And when people, um, and the basis for that is, uh, it does motivate people, which is uh, been seen uh, from the results-based measurement. And secondly, when there are multiple ways to achieve the outcomes, then use results-based measurement. about goal setting and realization for the performance goals. These are things which uh, people generally know, people who are uh, employed in organizations, they have uh, a good understanding of goal setting and performance evaluation. So let's look at it, um, uh, some of the points here. Um, goal setting should be face-to-face -face and there should be a proper agreement, should not be vague. And the goal should percolate down from the top to the, uh, from the senior most management to the, uh, the staff uh, at the lower end. There should be both the number based like profit goals or customer base increase goals versus uh, general qualitative uh, subjective goals like uh, general improvements to be done in um, reputation etc goals need to be tailored for the individual depending on their job depending on their skills and uh, what can be expected from them accordingly goals can be set uh, raising the bar too high all of a sudden can cause a problem and uh, because if if an employee has given a very high target which is impossible and then at the end of the year we tell them or end of the quarter we tell them that you did not achieve this target then they are going to get really demotivated they will think that i was given a goal which was impossible for me there's no point in uh, accepting such goals next time the goal linkage we discussed that already and um, <clears throat> Uh, need to be modified from time to time if a situation changes in the organization. If uh, if a product uh, owner is supposed to uh, roll out a product release by a certain time and if uh, the economy has significantly changed and there is no budget available, then we can't hold the product owner accountable for uh, lack of delivering the product. So it should be realistic as well, apart from uh, adaptation to situational changes. Goals should be specific, measurable, measurable and documented. There should be metrics with targets. They should be documented, agreed, aligned to the organization's overall uh, vision and the strategic objectives. So the goals are good, only then um, uh, we know um, that we are progressing towards the improvement. For example, if there is a goal to, uh, to go for a supplier integration model, 
then having the goal and certain measures there will help us track the progress towards supplier integration and we can see what is going on on the supplier integration what is the improvement on the supplier integration front uh, because without that properly defined goals uh, there'll be lack of understanding of what is going on and what will be eventually be the result or outcome We move on to another topic, which is the culture of continual improvement. Generally, a reactive mode of improvement would be to act when there is an issue. A continual improvement is not that really. It's uh, being uh, more proactive on that. So even if things are working fine, uh, there needs to be alignment on changing business needs. Therefore, uh, things need to be improved or modified. 